This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. It's all about this guitar today, the Harley Benton Fusion T. Uh, with the fixed bridge uh, it has a longer model number but it's basically that's what we're talking about here uh, you might have seen me unboxing this guitar on Thursday and doing like a first impressions run through of it and I said in that video that today Sunday I'd be doing a you know a, a kind of more in-depth uh, detailed review of it and that's what we're going to do and let's get that started straight away by hearing what this guitar sounds like in a mix And as always, you'll find a full tab for that piece of music in both Guitar Pro and PDF formats, along with a clip of me playing it and a jam track to play along with yourself. All of that is up on my Patreon page. There's the address, link in the description. $3 or £2.50 a month gets you access to all of these additional goodies that go along with these YouTube videos. A massive, massive thank you to everyone who supports me in that or any of the other ways, all of which are also down in the description. Uh, while we're doing a little bit of housekeeping, let's uh, look at the settings I was using there basically one setting uh, the uh, vintage channel on the blue guitar amp m amp one mercury edition uh, which has a very kind of old school martial kind of plexi sort of tone um, that was all of the tones in that solo uh, a kit well I think on the final solo I kicked in the uh, the new X horseman uh, drive pedal just to give it a little bit more push but um, that was only the last 16 bars uh, everything else, all of the changes in um, in tone are coming from using the controls on the guitar, the volume and the uh, the single coil switching and the pickup selector. Um, very versatile guitar that in, in, in that regard. This guitar. We'll have a listen to some of those tones uh, shortly, but let's have a little bit of a look. Uh, at the sort of stats and specs for this guitar you can see a nut width there of 42 millimeters um strangely it actually measures as 42 millimeters as well it's specified as that uh, but quite often i'll get a guitar that will say 42 millimeters or 43 and you measure it and it's something slightly off from that so uh, as you can see there bang on 42 millimeters 
Um, you can see first and 12th fret neck profiles there and a weight of 3.39 kilos. Uh, I've done the uh, DC pickup resistance readings which uh, you can see sort of a, a fairly um, kind of moderate to vintage output set of pickups bridge pickup 8.51 k neck 8.16 and in the middle uh, 4.2 and then when we uh, pull the uh, tone control out uh, to access the single coil tones you can see that the readings are roughly uh, kind of half of the uh, full humbucker readings so those are your stats i'll put a, a link to the full spec down in the description but you know the headline figures are uh, roasted maple neck and fretboard locking tuners stainless steel frets uh, i think it's called a niato or nato uh, body that's the timber uh, which looks to be when you uh, look at the the edges um, because this binding around the edge here this is uh, just the um, you know that kind of fake binding the prs style binding where they just kind of mask off the wood before they put the finish on uh scrape binding it's sometimes called um looking at the edges there i th I, I would say this is probably a four-piece body those are the kind of um number of uh, bits of timber i can count excuse me while i just check what my phone is telling me um uh yes i'll deal with that later uh, excuse me um so yeah uh roasted maple stainless steel frets niato or nato body uh we've got a flame maple veneer on on this which isn't as spectacular as uh some guitars uh, some of these harley benton guitars uh but it's just you know the look of the draw really i think this is possibly one of the reasons why i bought this in the sale 195 pound i paid for this guitar uh they're usually i think about 260 or uh, 299 or you know kind of um higher 200s but uh, you know for sub 200 pounds you know this is uh very much um, a bargain i would say uh you can't you probably noticed in that um in that clip of me playing it earlier there's quite a bit of figuring going on in the neck let's see if we can kind of highlight that there so you you can see that the, the kind of lovely um uh, kind of flamey kind of maple going on there certainly on the fretboard at least um so you know an attractive looking guitar and um a, a, a impressive i think range of tones let's have a listen to some of those now what i'm uh, what i've got at the moment is i've got the uh, the tone control pulled out so i'm in single coil mode i'm in the middle position here and that's where we're going to start and i'm just going to kind of have a little bit of a run through the controls playing with the volume control playing with the pickup selector so you can hear the range of just clean and dirty tones you can get uh, from this guitar you know without going anywhere near a, a foot switch let's have a listen that all day um you know so it, it's got like from just from the controls on the guitar a very very impressive range of tones that i think sit in a mix uh you know very very well um 
so a lot of positives about this guitar but are there any negatives um well there's one or two um it it arrived with um i wouldn't say a poor setup but a less than ideal setup and you know when you get that little card that's on the the tag that's attached to the uh, tuning peg and you know somebody has ticked that everything is as it should be well it wasn't on this guitar uh, the main thing really that i had to do was um basically set the intonation and the action on the bridge it looked like the bridge had just kind of been put on strung up and you know it wasn't anywhere near correctly intonated and you know the bridge saddles bore no relationship to the actual radius of the neck it's easily fixed if you know what you're doing um but you know this guitar is in the price bracket that will probably appeal to you know somebody getting their first guitar or second guitar you know it's it's going to be uh, possibly a, a, a novice guitarist that's that's um going to be getting one of these guitars and if it's poorly set up that can be off-putting to um, a newbie so that's something to take into account um the neck profile um is very very similar actually let me just grab another guitar here uh, the neck profile feels in the hand very similar to the neck on this guitar this is uh, probably what's been my number one guitar uh, for a little while now um the prs uh, s2 standard 24 satin very very comfortable neck and um, as i say the uh, the neck profile on this guitar feels immediately familiar after having picked up that one with one exception the edges of the fretboard um you know which on that guitar are kind of very comfortably rolled and on this now yeah you could say well you know under 200 pounds expecting rolled fretboard edges i'm just saying from a personal perspective i've got kind of used to playing guitars with rolled fretboard edges um that prs there that sire um, l7 on the wall behind me and even that uh, humble little green telecaster Faisley thing that you can see next door to the acoustic up there i mean there's a budget guitar 150 pound came with rolled fretboard edges uh, but this doesn't um whether or not i you know break out the old stanley knife blade and kind of uh, just take that edge off a little bit is going to depend on whether or not i'm keeping this guitar um, you know at the moment it's a lovely guitar it's the new toy in the box and you know it's full of novelty factor i'm going to let that die down a bit and make a decision about whether i'm going to keep the guitar or move it on and if i decide to keep it then yes i'll definitely be doing uh, that rolled fretboard i just think might even make a video about it um uh, the main downside for me on this whole experience of uh, getting this guitar was um the pretty poor customer service I re received from Tom, and I outlined that um, on a live stream a few weeks ago. Well, kind of round about when I got this guitar, because I'm making this video kind of weeks in advance um, because of the schedule, the filming schedule that I've got. Uh, but in a live stream back then, I did detail the um, the slightly, well, very much so, I would say, less than satisfactory uh, customer service exp experience I had. Uh, when dealing with Toman over the lateness of uh, this guitar, it was it took far too long to arrive, and uh, nobody seemed to want to take ownership of uh, the reason why it had taken so long to arrive. So a little bit of um, you know a sour taste there, it has to be said, customer service wise. But I would say, you know, more than made up for by me eventually getting the guitar and um, the pleasant experience of playing it and uh, the um, the kind of tones that it makes. I've never really been a fan of these uh, Roswell Alnico 5 pickups in the past. They're okay, you know, they do the job, but I've always thought, hmm, I, I, I'm more of an Alnico 2 kind of guy. Um, but in this setting, on this guitar, through this rig, I don't think... Um, I'm going to be in any hurry to change them as I say whether whether that um, if I was going to change them that would all depend upon whether or not I'm keeping this guitar and that is uh, the jury's still out on that let the novelty factor uh, 
recede a bit and um, I'll keep you posted but there you go folks that is my review and assessment and demo uh, of the Harley Benton Fusion T hardtail make of it what you will hope you've enjoyed the video and found it uh, informative and useful and hopefully a little bit entertaining in some small way and if that's the case please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so and why not drop me a like as well while you're at it don't forget the live stream every Friday 5pm UK time we drink beer and talk about music and guitars and whatever else crops up great way to kick off the weekend and i'd love to see you there if you can make it but for now i'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching thank you for your time look after yourselves folks stay well stay safe and above all stay sane bye for now mm -hmm.